Hello, Wilkes-Barre Stratton Knights fans. Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner alongside NAHL head coach Tom Kowal. I'm Andrew Mossbrooks. Coach, last time we talked, it was about Adrian Danchenko. He was one of many players we talked about. He had seven points in three games. You thought he should have been nominated for a star of the week. Clearly, the North American Hockey League agreed with you. He was the East Division star of the week last week. What, uh, what makes Danchenko deserving of that honor? And I think we kind of talked about this last time, too, but can we just highlight a little bit more about what this kid brings to the Knights? Because I think it's quite a lot. You know, Adrian, you know, he's been, he's been with our team for two years now, and, he, and he, he's going to be his third year playing for the team. And, you know, got committed over the summer. I mean, he shows why he's who he is. Um, he, you know, he's a dynamite offensive player that, you know, every team needs a player like that. Um, you know, Adrian just was one day away or one minute away from making the USHL. So, you know, Adrian came in and proved what he can be and who he can be. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think you're going to find too many more offensive type players that have the skills that Adrian Danchenko has in this league. But you got to do it every weekend. You know, so seven points are great, but, you know, we, you know he's a, a leader for us and he needs to do that every weekend. You know, maybe not seven, maybe ten, but, right. <laughs> you know, hey, we'll take two or three, two at the same time, you know. Uh, so. yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know what? Uh, you mentioned every weekend, and, and look, in the reality of a 60-game season, you will win games, you will lose games, and that does happen. Uh, you're coming off a weekend where you were on the bad side of things. Johnstown Tomahawks come into Revolution Ice Center. They take both games. But I'm of the belief that you can learn from losing, and obviously you as a coach are probably along that link, too. So. What are the takeaways from a couple of losses to a team that so far is taking the East Division by storm? Well, at the end of the day, you know, Johnstown, they, they didn't make playoffs last year and they made the adjustments. I mean, they, they you know, they're one of the hottest teams in the league right now, you know, and, and you know, they've done a real good job recruiting, get some experience in there. You know, yeah, they're, they're, they're a little older than we are and experience as much as we are, but, you know, there's no doubt we kept them close. You know, we... We, we didn't get any wins, we didn't get any points out of the weekend, but I thought we grew as a team. We obviously need to play better. You know, we all understand that. We've had a great week of practice. So, you know, as long as those two losses don't turn into four losses after two weekends, you know, with us going into Jamestown this weekend, you know, that that's our goal as a staff right now for the early in the year is to not let those losses carry into more losses. We need to get back on that winning streak. We need to get back on that tomorrow night. In Jamestown. I think part of that comes with uh, correcting mistakes, if I'm not wrong here. And I think when you look at the, those games, you mentioned they are close games. What do you look at, though, in terms of why those losses come? I, I don't know. I want to say from a broadcasting point of view, it might be the lack of goal scoring in the early part of the season. The team uh, isn't stringing a lot of goals together per game. So... Uh, what do you attest to some of these problems? You know, when you when you got a bunch of guys like we do that, that come out from the youth hockey, whether it's U16 or U18, or even, you know, EHL, you know what I mean, or, you know, or the NA3HL, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's, it's tough for them to make the adjustment. The NA is a very good hockey league. You've got to go hard to the net. You've got to get into the gray areas. You've got to get into the dirty areas. And, 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 you know, if you're walking away from the rink at the other night without a nice pack and not a bruise on your body, more than likely you didn't get you didn't get into the dirty areas. You didn't right. score a goal. So you're, you hit it right correctly, Andrew. I mean, we're not scoring goals. It's tough to score, tough to win hockey games if you're not scoring. And so, you know, we've really worked on um, bruising our bodies this week a little bit in practice to, to make it better, better defensively, but make, more importantly, make us better offensively to realize you know, shooting from the perimeter on goalies that, the, you know, that these teams have coming into our building or going into their building, you're not going to beat them from out wide. you got to get in there. you got to get rebounds. you got to screen these goalies. Let's talk about goalies in our league. Because we get NHL draft picks every year out of our league from the goaltender position. you got to get in there and you got to, you know, take, take their eyes away or, or, you know, get closer to the net when you shoot. But if you don't score goals, you're not going to win hockey games. <laughs> Well, yeah, simple as that. And, you know, you're 5-7-1 and one through the first 13 games of the season. Coming up next is the Jamestown Rebels. Both of you teams, uh, both teams have 11 points so far this season. Uh, before we get to that, because we're talking a little bit about some of these, these areas that can be improved, you're, if you were a teacher, and in some ways, I mean, you are, you're the coach of this team, what's your letter grade for the team through the first 13 games? You know, I'd say probably a C. You know, I mean, you, you never want to be under 500. I mean, but, you know, 
you know, we, we've kind of, we went from having an A weekend to a D weekend to, you know, we're probably a C plus right now, you know, maybe a B minus. I mean, just, you know, after this week of practice, we probably went from a C plus to a B minus, but we got to put that to work this weekend, you know, so um, I'm, I'm happy in some areas where, where the progression we're making, but the staff is also, you know, knows that we're really pushing hard in practice to improve these other areas that, you know, we're, you know, that we're struggling in right now, which on the weekends is why we're not winning the hockey games. We're getting the goaltending. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> we're, we're getting the goaltending. We're, you know, you're getting a player like Adrian to score seven points, but we need other guys to contribute. And, we, you know, we, you just said it, we're, we're a, a third, you know, a fourth into the season almost. You know I mean? It's, we're not rookies anymore. We're not new to the game. We're not adjusting. We have to play hockey and play high-level junior hockey every day. We step on the ice. <clears throat> if we're going to get two points, you know, this is a big weekend for the Knights. You never want to call it a, a must-win weekend, but we've got to get back on track. So we got to get the Knights going in the right direction and believe in the right things right now. It'll be interesting this weekend because you are playing the Jamestown Rebels. It's not the Philadelphia Rebels. It's not the Aston Rebels. Third time in as many years they have relocated. But the Rebels organization and the Knights organization are part of some great history. Of course, they were a big part of the Knights' success last year, getting to the Robertson Cup Finals. Uh, also, you guys got to participate in the game at Wells Fargo Center, which was the first North American League game to be played in an NHL arena in 20 years. Uh, and when you look at this team now in New York, it's it's not the Philadelphia Rebels, Tom. There's a lot of different players on this team. You still have Joe Coombs behind uh, the, the bench there. What do you look at uh, and what's different from the scouting perspective when looking at Jamestown versus last year against Philadelphia? Well, I mean, it's, it's, you know, if you look at just what Jamestown's done this week, They've uh, they've made about they have about five players leaving Jamestown yep. and five new players coming in. A kid out of the USHL, um, you know they they're uh, you know we're all you're, like you, you addressed earlier, Andrew, that to, the road to the Robertson Cup has gone through Jam gone through the Rebels and the Knights organization the past three years. Ever since the East has been a division, so you know. But we know that Jam Johnstown and the Northeast Generals and now Maryland and the New Jersey Titans. They want a piece of that pie, right. you know. So it's going to be a fun weekend. You know, Rebels are always good. I don't care where if they're in Rio Grande or in Philly or in Aston. <laughs> now they're in Jamestown. You know, I mean, a little farther bus ride, but at the end of the day, you, they're still the Rebels, and they still got that coach Joe Coombs. That every year, you know, whether they're having a good streak or a bad streak, they end up, you know, one of the top teams in our division in the last three years. You know, and I don't expect anything different this year from the Rebels. Right. Well, it's a beautiful new arena, uh, Northwest Arena in New York, and that'll be where the Wilkes-Barre Strand Knights are traveling. The five-game homestand is over. Up next, a brief road trip, and then they come back home again, the Johnstown Tomahawks. That'll be what kicks off November, but before that Halloween weekend in the Empire State, the Knights and the Rebels, Friday and Saturday night, both games are set for a 7 p.m. puck drop. They'll be available on Hockey TV. Uh, but until then, that's going to do it for this edition of Coach's Corner. I want to remind you real quick to follow the Knights on social media, at fa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at WBS Knights. And, of course, WBSKnights.com for all the game previews and recaps. At Coach Tom Kowal, thank you for the time. Thank you very much.